Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the academic track at State of the Map 2021. My name is Marco Minghini, and I'm speaking from the north of Italy. Um, I'm happy to um, welcome you back to the academic track. We have already uh, seen two very interesting talks about uh, first uh, uh, natural language and OpenStreetMap and then machine learning and OpenStreetMap. So I'm very happy uh, to see that there have, have been uh, good discussions with the community, which is exactly the purpose of the academic track. That is to stimulate interactions between the scientific and the research side of uh, OpenStreetMap and the larger community of OpenStreetMap. It is my pleasure now to um, uh, introduce the, our third uh, speaker, of this uh, session. Uh, his name is Maxwell Ogozu. Uh, he's from uh, the uh, Heidelberg Institute for Geoformation Technology in uh, Heidelberg. He will present us um, a work uh, titled uh, Towards a Framework for Measuring Local Data Contribution in OpenStreetMap. He will be the speaker, but uh, it's uh, uh, important to uh, remember that this is a, a, a research work that was co-authored also by uh, his colleagues Benjamin Herford and Sven Lautenbach. So now you will see uh, the video and then we will be back here uh, for the Q&A session. Enjoy the video. Hello, everyone. My name is Maxwell Ousu, and I'll give a talk on towards a framework for measuring local data contribution in OSM. I would like to give a special thanks to Benjamin and Stefan for their support and guidance in carrying out this research. So let's begin. The increasing availability and importance of local data in OSM has been largely acknowledged. Local data, as we all know, provide access to several contextual information. This information can be used for several applications. It, it, it is also an essential feature for measuring OSM quality. Usually, mapping activities in OSM can be grouped into local mappers and remote mappers. Whilst remote mappers usually can map from anywhere, local mappers tend to have local knowledge and they only contribute locally. So what we are interested in is to what extent has local data in OSM been mapped? And the first challenge that we faced was there has been limited studies to analyze local data in sufficient details. Also, there is no consensus on the definition of local knowledge, and this hints how, and, and as a result, there is no agreement upon metrics for measuring local data. In this study, we first of all started with a literature review. Then we had a discussion with community, local community mapping groups, where um, we were mainly interested in finding out what is local OSM, what are their perception, and also together with the local community working groups, how we could develop a classification schema for measuring local data in OSM. Afterwards, we designed um, the classification schema and filters using the awesome API by the Highgate group. And then we have case studies to test. So, um, Mainly in the literature review, one of the works trying to group OSM was by Rebecca from HOT. And in her work, she tries to group local data from level zero to level four, where usually as you move to level four, you add a lot of local data. However, this classification schema was only focusing on humanitarian activities. And in our work, we make we 
try to expand and include several applications. The outcome of the community working group already shows that there was no clear definition for local data. Usually, local data varies across regions, and some of the notable reasons were because one, um, the purpose of the mapping organization differs across regions and even within a particular region. Also, the interests of the individual mapper plays an important role in what is meant by local data. So together with the community working groups, we developed this classification schema where broadly we group them into core category and specific category. The core category mainly are those that could be mapped or can be done or cut across all projects or all uh, mapping activities in OSM. For example, building and highways, and then the specific are uh, those that have more local knowledge and it differs across regions. So from that, the classification schema begins from level one to level four, where level one is those that could be mapped remotely, and level two, we look at data that are mainly imported. So level three then talks about um, the general land use and specific amenities. And during at the level four stage where we add more micro data, for example, the building name, the building material, the building height. Afterwards, we design um, classification schema. In this classification schema, we group them into three main mapping elements. That is the building, the highways, and amenities. And we design several filters and booleans to be able to extract the different levels of local data. So we now test our Filters and we develop, um, we use three case studies. So one is Dar es Salaam, an urban area where, which is in Tanzania and most of the activities, so map activities has been done by the rural Romani groups, which, which is more interested in flood resilient activities. We also selected Mari region, also in Tanzania, because a lot of work has been done by the crowd to map who, who are usually uh, mapping activities that could support or uh, that can prevent female genital mutilation. We also added Kwanadupu in Sierra Leone, which is a rural area where there's been a lot of work done by youth mappers. Um, so the results for buildings um, are mainly in level one and three and then four. Overall, we, we can see that the densities decreases from level one to level four. Surprisingly, in Dar es Salaam, we, we witnessed that um, the Elements map in level four was more than level three. Also, we, we could see that the trend or the, the timestamp when the map activities were done seems to be simultaneous in some instances and others not. For example, in Dar es Salaam, we could see that level one and level three tends to be mapped simultaneously than level four. It should be noted that uh, maps were done in density and the y axis differ. So, also, similar trend was also identified in highways, where um, sometimes the mapping activity. Um, 
tend to be simultaneously mapped. For example, in Dar es Salaam, level one and level two seems to be mapped differently from level four. Similar is identified in the Maori region, but the mapping activities were quite different in the Kwanatu. In amenities, it was quite different where the mapping activities happened differently from all the levels. We also um, included this ratio with only an example for highway to also show you how the, the differences are. In this case, we showed level one and level four, and then you could see that the ratio between the two is quite large. So um, in this work, um, we've already seen the classification schema and an outlook is to include more perspective from local communities and also to group editors' local knowledge into these levels to see how their mapping behaviors are evolving over time. So in conclusion, um, a classification schema helps to conceptualize the metrics for measuring localness in OSM. It also provides insight into the richness of contextual information. And also search information or where most of the local data or local knowledge is included gives an indication of the OSM quality. With this, I would like to end here and looking forward to receiving your questions and tips to improve the work. You can also contact me on my email below. Thank you for listening. Thanks a lot, Maxwell, <clears throat> for this presentation. That was very, very uh, interesting. And I think the aspect of localness is always uh, a very important one, also um, uh, from the academic side, because it, it might uh, um, help uh, uh, study a lot of, uh, um, a lot of uh, let's say, um, some connected um, uh, features of OpenStreetMap. You mentioned, for example, quality, but I think we can come to that uh, during the um, uh, questions. So, so um, there was uh, actually just one question uh, from the chat. So I invite, in the meantime, everyone else to um, uh, ask additional questions and so that Maxwell can uh, reply to you. Um, I'll start with the first one, uh, Maxwell. Um, that is basically this one. How were the levels of remote and local knowledge defined? So is this based on previous uh, studies? So maybe can, can you elaborate a bit more on your hypothesis for your research? So how did you define basically what is local and what is not? Yeah, so um, thank you everyone um, for listening to my talk. So um, with, with, with the levels, what um, we did was we first um, looked through the literature to see what has been done. And one interesting paper, not really a paper, but in a Twitter post was from Rebecca Fate, where um, she tried to develop um, this classification schema. So um, this motivated us to also try to expand and not only look at um, the humanitarian activity, but then to add several, um, con like several applications to it. So to, de to develop um, a more, um, Call, we are we are thinking of things that are mainly um, you can do almost from everywhere. So like remote activities, which could be um, done from anywhere. And then we also have um, like those data that can easily be imported. Where local, like the specific one, we are looking at um, things that really requires like ground data or the person really needs to have a more local knowledge. 
before they can really provide such information. For example, like the building use or like, for example, if the number of hospital beds, this kind of information really needs somebody to be on grounds to provide such information. Thanks, Maxwell, and uh, for clarifying these. Actually, there, there might be different interpretations, of course, of what is local. Uh, what we know, and I think we all agree about, is that uh, localness is a key aspect of the whole OpenStreetMap uh, project. Uh, and it's great to see uh, research teams uh, studying uh, that. Let me go on with the second question. Um, can you establish a probability level, so a p-value, a p-statistic, that uh, a given mapper is local versus uh, remote? Um, so yes, so um, this is a work in progress, but yes, um, it's, it's also possible to establish um, the probability levels because um, the main idea is to take from the remote and then try to see how much additional information has been added to um, this um, remote um, data. For example, if you pick building, um, you know that the, if you check, I mean, if you have to check building, you could see that there have been lots of building elements map. But then if you want to really look at the probabilities in relating to how much extra contextual information has been added, then you could see that maybe it's only a few. Thanks uh, a lot. Um... I go with the next one because we have many questions uh, that uh, have appeared in the meantime. Uh, the next question uh, asks uh, this. So you added a highway surface to level four, but many remote mappers add, for example, surface equal to paved or unpaved using remote imagery. So shouldn't this be in the level one? So I think this is, again, it, it's connected you know, to what can be uh, defined local and, and what is, is instead remote. Yes, so that is that is the challenge because even um, before we could come up with these categories, we tried to contact some local communities and it was also a challenge even for them to agree on a particular classification. So it could be in the first and then it could also be in the second, depending on how you look at it. Yeah, maybe one uh, as an insight, uh, it might be also useful whenever possible to look at the source for uh, for for mapping. Sometimes the in the source uh, of a chain set, maybe a mapper uh, uh, states whether uh, it is from survey or it is from uh, uh, an imagery, uh, for example. So this might be useful also to check it to check. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, next question is about the graphs. I saw some comments in the chat about the graphs that were really, really insightful. Um, the question is um, uh, the following. Is there any intention to create those graphs for other areas and uh, other studies uh, elsewhere? Yes. So um, so the main ideal is to um, develop a more, um, let's say, a more generalized um, framework where we can easily test it in other areas to at least to be able to compare. So that is the main ideal. And that is why we also try to use at least three case studies to see if we could see different um, dynamics in relation to this um, local data. Great, thank you, uh, Maxwell. Um, I'll go with the next one. Uh, would you consider Again, it's related to the graphs. Uh, would you consider the metrics that you use to generate the graph uh, to be generalizable globally? Uh, again, uh, I mean, if I can interpret this, uh, it, it's again on whether uh, the results and the metrics or the way to interpret the localness can be in general uh, extended uh, and, and generalized, which of course it's very important for any for any research, as you know uh, very well. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so I think. For now, um, we are still trying to see um, how we can include um, a more generalized um, classification um, schema. So um, we are still discussing and trying to see how we can make it more generalized. But then from our experiment, it's, it's quite promising and then it's also possible to generalize it. Thanks. Um, I'll go with the last one. Uh, let me uh, let me read it. Uh, so, what do you think to extend the classification in a country um, 
where the local mapper or local contribution is very low in number and the import data from the government isn't helping at all as well because there is no clear attributes in the government data. So if I understand it correctly, um, the idea is how to apply a framework like yours in a case where there is actually very uh, little local contribution um, either because there are there is there is little data in general or because there is a lot of data that is imported uh, with few uh, attributes yes so um i think this is a very good question um what what i mainly that is also one like that is what we are also interested in finding out because um we we are not only that we are really thinking that there could be a lot of remote or a lot of data um provided in OSM, but then there's little um, local data provided. So if if um, in one particular country, we could say that maybe there's a lot of building um, mapped in terms of um, imported or remotely mapped data, but um, in terms of contextual data, which is also very important for, let's say, humanitarian activities to know the road condition or uh, in terms of flood to know maybe if there's drainage, like is it a covered or is it covered or the condition or in terms of let's say people trying to look at um, restaurants, look at the opening hours, like we are interested in seeing if we have um, the point of interest, how much extra information is also added to um, these to really create more um, contextual information to provide access to several applications, not really just providing the remote um, or imported data. Thanks, Maxwell. I hope this answer, uh, answers the question. Um, I go with the last one because we have something uh, appearing and uh, uh, yeah, so questions are, are, are keeping uh, uh, coming, which is great. Uh, it means the, the talk generated a lot of uh, interest. So I go with the next one. Uh, um, did you observe any patterns in how the ratio between local and expert knowledge changes over time? For example, does uh, uh, first uh, it is more remote and later more local? Uh, yes. So um, um, yes, indeed, it's correct. Um, what what um, you you will see from some of the graphs? Maybe if you get time to pause and then look at the graphs, you could see that. For example, um, where there's a lot, you could see we have a lot of densities for remote um, data. And when, when you try to do a Boolean with um, remote data and then more local data, you could see that the densities reduce um, a lot. And you could see that although the um, is increasing as the years um, go forward, but um, the densities are not really as compared to um, the remotely uh, map um, data. And also, um, we are also thinking of um, in the future how we, we could also use um, the knowledge like user edits to be able to also see how they also contribute into um, local data. Thank you. Uh, next one. Uh, when uh, considering local data as good data, I think it is important to consider that often local knowledge goes hand in hand with remote data, for example, mapping party and later ground truth mapping. Do you agree? Yes. Yes, so I agree with you perfectly that um, usually you have to start from somewhere like you have the park and then you go on grounds to validate. So um, yes, I really agree. Okay, thanks, uh, Maxwell. Uh, there are no uh, more questions, but I still invite uh, attendees to ask uh, some in the um, in the questions tab on Venueless. In the meantime, uh, um, I would uh, ask you if you can elaborate a bit on the um, on the issue of quality. And uh, clearly, we know that uh, the open stream of quality in general is a very debated and discussed topic, and also very important topic for the use of open street map uh, for clearly any application. No? Um, so can you elaborate a bit on how this study and in general, how the localness of uh, information in OpenStreetMap can be um, 
considered as a proxy uh, for uh, data quality uh, in general and maybe also in specific cases because I think what we all agree is that uh, uh, the context uh, uh, in OpenStreetMap is might be very different and basically the way OpenStreetMap data develops might be very different so maybe conclusions cannot be generalized. We know that the quality of OpenStreetMap in general uh, is not just a number, it's not just a, a sentence, the quality can vary a lot. So how is this related to localness? Uh, um, yes, so um, in, in relation to um, this research, um, we are trying to see how we can also at least give an indication of quality by saying that, I mean, if, if you have um, a building and then there's a lot of contextual um, like a lot of local data attached to it, then um, it already gives you that um, this building is really indeed um, there and then people really know about it. So we, we are trying to make make a more, um, I, like we are trying to make an idea that if there's a lot of local data attached to a particular element in OSM, then it already gives an indication that this, this um, element is indeed um, there and then it's also having a lot of attention with a lot of contextual information added and this can also help to um give uh, like give an indication that's an indication that is related to its quality thanks a lot maxwell we still have uh, some time so um if you don't mind i will go on with another uh, question can you elaborate a bit on the uh, uh, classification framework developed by Rebecca that we take the chance to greet, by the way, uh, because this was a kind of a starting point for developing your own framework. Um, can you elaborate a bit on uh, what uh, what this framework is and whether it derives from uh, um, um, previous research or how was it uh, um, um, conceived? Yeah, so um, for Rebecca's Framework. Um, she she had um, four levels from level zero to level four, and where level zero is where you don't have um, any um, like nothing is mapped, and then as you move to level one, then they start to provide maybe rows, and then as you move to level four, then you have a lot of um, micro data which is attached to it. So it really shows a more progressive um, step where usually the idea for Rebecca was these are many the steps in how local data is added where you start from nothing and then you have your rules and then your buildings and then you start adding um, point of interest and then adding um, more micro data like opening hours or if the road surface is good or bad and if, if it's under construction so it's more or less like how she was more thinking on how humanitarian activities um, really starts with their mapping activities. But then, of course, there were some um, issues because, as you said, um, as raised by some of the questions, like what, um, even in her framework, what she might terms as level four or um, more micro data, somebody will say that, of course, this one could also be generated in level one or level two. So it's also um, a, a less, a more. Um, conflict and then of course the definition for local data already is ambiguous and um, it's always a challenge to come to a more concrete um, framework. Thanks again Maxwell for uh, uh, answering this uh, uh, question. Um, I don't see any uh, additional question in the chat um, so I can maybe uh, start uh, wrapping up. Uh, first of all, uh, I would like to thank you, uh, your co-authors, but also to thank uh, the audience. Uh, um, I think uh, uh, the amount of questions we get is always a good measure, uh, at least for, for us as academics, of the kind of interest that uh, is there from the community at large, uh, but also at the, uh, the amount of hints uh, and needs from the community. This is what we as academics, uh, as scientists need to really uh, be sure that we focus our research on something that is useful uh, for the community. And uh, I really thank all of you for your uh, input, which is very important, not, not only here, but also in, in general. Let me also take the chance 
to uh, remind everyone here that there is a, a specific mailing list that is the OSN science mailing list that is exactly the OpenStreetMap mailing list for scientific applications. So um, uh, if you are a scientist, a researcher, but also if you are a, a member of, uh, of the community and enthusiast of OpenStreetMap, feel free to join that mailing list and uh, um, uh, to ask questions that researchers can actually um, uh, address. That's, that's very important. Again, in this idea, that uh, the academic track and the OpenStreetMap research uh, world is not seen in contrast or in parallel to the, uh, let's say, to the larger uh, OpenStreetMap community, but they, we can actually work uh, um, uh, together and basically uh, be sure that our research answers um, concrete needs uh, of the community. So um, with this, um, just a reminder uh, uh, that uh, um, the academic track will have uh, will continue on track one after this uh, talk. The next uh, talk is called Community Interactions in OSM uh, Editing. So I encourage you to stay connected in this uh, talk. Um, also, let me just remind that we will have uh, proceedings of the academic track. The proceedings are the short papers, will include the short papers corresponding to all the talks that you will uh, hear during the course of the day. Um, so we have nine talks uh, for a total of nine short papers plus a short editorial written by the scientific committee. Uh, the proceedings will be published next week. You will find the links in the OpenStreetMap uh, state of the map uh, website. Um, that is it. I uh, finally uh, invite all of you to join Maxwell that will be available in the post talk chat room. So feel free to join uh, him in that room if you want to ask uh, uh, additional questions or if you want to uh, have a virtual meeting um, with uh, uh, him. Uh, with that, I think we can really close. I hope you like the talk. If you like the talk, please uh, put your hands together for a virtual applause uh, uh, in the platform and uh, uh, Maxwell and all of us will be uh, happy uh, to uh, virtually hear that uh, applause uh, from you. Um, this is it. Uh, thank you again, uh, Maxwell and co-authors, and uh, thank you to the audience for your um, uh, interesting uh, input and contribution to the discussion and see you in the next talk.